on the 10th of October, 680 AD, at a time when corruption was rife in the Muslim world, one of the saddest historical tragedies took place. The grandson of the Holy Prophet, Hussein the son of Ali, with his family had just been attacked. Cornered from all sides and cut off from water supplies for days, the family of the Holy Prophet were forced into a bloody battle known as the Battle of Karbala. Hussein was killed alongside the men in his camp whilst trying to save Islam. And now the duty was in the hands of the women and children left behind. A new journey was about to begin, in which these saviors and flag bearers, led by Lady Zainab and her nephew Al Sarjad, would carry out the mission to restore the teachings of the Holy Prophet, showing the world that there is no place for injustice and dishonesty. The skies were red like blood. It was the hardest night for the family of the Prophet. In the emptiness of the desert, they face the darkness and loneliness of the night. Dawn breaks out on the desolate sands of Karbala. What was the battlefield yesterday is a stretch of desert covered with the bodies of the slain. The struggle was far from over for this noble family. It was just the beginning. As the wails and shrieks of the women and children filled the silence that followed the battle, and just as they were beginning to mourn for their beloved lost ones, the army of Ibn Sa'd marched toward them, circulating around the women and children. They looted whatever was in the tents. When they were done, they set the remaining tents on fire. The soldiers fought over the women, but they resisted and ran in all different directions. The next day in the afternoon, Ibn Sa'd and his army prepared to lead towards Kufa. All the women and children were gathered in chains forced to walk barefoot on the hot sands as prisoners to be taken to Ibn Ziyad. Ali, son of Hussein, known as al Sajjad, was chained and placed on a camel without a saddle. al Sajjad was Hussein's only son to survive, unable to take part in the Battle of Karbala due to his illness. His life was spared because he was weak and fragile. The women begged for the army to let them see the dead bodies on their way. The army agreed and took them. When they saw the scene, they fell on the bodies, each one kissing and crying on the bodies. The sister of Hussein, Lady Zainab, shouted, Oh Muhammad! This is Hussein, stoned by catapults, mixed with blood and sand, his body cut into pieces. O oh Muhammad, your children are taken captives and your descendants are killed. O oh God, accept this sacrifice from us. The women and children did not want to leave the bodies. Finally, Zajr ibn Bais came and whipped them with lashes, forcing them to go. After a long and hard journey of 70 kilometers, finally the captives arrive in Kufa. 
they are paraded in the streets for all to see. The people gathered around them to see who they were, asking questions. One lady came and asked, Which war are you prisoners of? They said, We are the prisoners from the house of Prophet Muhammad. When Zainab reached a large group of people, she stood and said, All praises to God and blessings to our forefather Muhammad. O people of Kufa, people of treachery and deception, you cry, may you never end your crying. O people of Kufa, do you not know what heart of the Prophet you have cut out? Do you not know what honored women of the Prophet's house you have enslaved and dishonored? Do you not know what blood of the Prophet you have shed? The people began to cry loudly when Al Sajjad's camel came forward. The people gathered around and saw him in chains, bleeding on the unsaddled camel. He then began. Praises and thanks to God. Blessings to the Prophet. O people, I am Ali, son of Hussein, son of Ali, Ibn Abu Talib. I am the son of the one whose women are taken captives. I am the son of the one whose wealth was looted. I am the son of the one whose honor was humiliated. I am the son of the one who was killed at the Euphrates. And that is a great honor for us. O people, I ask you, by God, do you know that you wrote to my father and deceived him? That you gave him a promise and broke it? that you fought against him. By what eyes can you look at the Prophet now? The people of Kufa were in a sorry state, but it was too late for tears, for the tragedy had already fallen upon the holy household, and now they were being led to the castle of Ibn Ziyad. Ibn Ziyad, the governor of Kufa, sat on his throne, and the head of Hussein was between his hands. Ibn Ziyad wanted to humiliate Lady Zainab, so he said, Praise God that he has exposed you and killed you and eradicated your cause. Lady Zainab replied, Praise God who has honored us by his prophet Muhammad and purified us from impurity. Indeed, only the guilty will be exposed, and the sinners will lie, and they are not we. Ibn Ziyad asked, What do you think of what God did to your family? She said, I did not see anything but good. These are people on whom martyrdom is destined. They went where God wanted them to go. God will gather you and them on the Day of Judgment. Ibn Ziyad ignored her, but turned his face to Ali al-Sajjad and said, What is your name? My name is Ali, son of Hussein. Ibn Ziyad said, Did God not kill Ali? Ali al-Akbar in Karbala? Al-Sajjad replied, I had another brother older than me named Ali. People killed him. Ibn Ziyad said, No! God killed him! God makes people die when it is time for their death. The people started talking about what happened, and Ibn Ziyad became afraid. He ordered the chief of the guards to imprison Hussein's family in a special house near the castle. People gathered to see them. Everyone was curious about the fate of the Prophet's family. Ibn Ziyad sent a messenger to Yazid, telling him of the events and waiting for his orders. The messenger came back with Yazid's reply that Ibn Ziyad should immediately send the prisoners and the heads to Damascus. 
When they came near Damascus, Shimmer, the head of the army, was leading the caravan. Um Kulthum asked him not to go from the main road, so people do not look at them with evil eyes. Shimmer did exactly the opposite, ordering the caravan to march through the city from the main road, and for all of the heads to be in the middle of the caravan. The blessed caravan of the Alubait traveled through Kufa and Aleppo, and finally reached Damascus after 20 days on the first day of the month of Safar. The prisoners were kept in Bab al-Sa'at, and people went to see them, dancing and using the drums. <laughs> Yazid was sitting on his throne in his castle. The prisoners were ordered to go to Yazid's main hall, and they were all tied together with one long rope. As they were pulled towards the castle, they were beaten if they did not keep up. When they entered the castle, Yazid faced al-Sajjad and said, What do you think of what God has done to your father, Hussein? In his famous speech, al-Sajjad said, Praise be to God who has no beginning, who is eternal. No one before him and no one will be after him. He will remain after the destruction of the whole world. O people, we are given six characters and we were honored by seven. We are given knowledge, patience, generosity, eloquence, bravery and love in the hearts of believers. And we are honored that the Prophet is from our family. O people, I am the son of Mecca and Mina. I am the son of Zamzam and Safa. I am the son of the one who carried the black stone with his robe. I am the son of the best of civilization. I am the son of the best of those who made Tawaf and Sa'i. I am the son of the man who rode the Burah to the end of the horizon and reached his Lord and was two bow shots away from him. I am the son of the one who prayed with the angels. I am the son of the one who received revelations. I am the son of the one who fought with Prophet of God at the battles of Badr and Hunayn. And he did not disbelieve in God even for a blink of an eye. I am the son of the best of believers and the heir of the prophets and the leader of Muslims, the knight of fighters, the father of Hassan and Hussein, Ali, son of Abi Talib. I am the son of Fatima Zahra, the leader of women of paradise and the great Khadija. I am the son of the one who was killed and covered with blood. I am the son of the one who was killed in Karbala. I am the son of the one for whom even the jinn cried and even the birds who flew in the sky. When Al-Sajjad said this, people yelled and wailed in an uproar of grief. Yazid began to fear that the situation would escalate. So he ordered for the Adan to be recited, even though it was not prayer time. Yes, I confirm, God is greater and more honored than anything I fear. Then the reciter said, Yes, I bear witness with everyone who witnesses that there is no God but Him. I do confirm and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Stop. Please stop. 
I ask you by the right of Muhammad to be silent for one minute. He faced Yazid and said, This messenger of God, is he your grandfather or my grandfather? If you say he is your grandfather, people who are present here will know that you are a liar. And if you say he is my grandfather, then why did you kill my father unjustly? Why did you loot his wealth? Why did you capture his women? On the day of judgment, my grandfather will be against you. Yazid interrupted Al-Sajjad and yelled the reciter to start the prayer, even though it was not time. Some left to pray, and others simply left the scene. Yazid, wanting to feel triumphant, recites poetry. I wish my ancestors were here to see how their enemies are in fear. They would be happy, and they would tell me, Yazid, you did a good job. We have taken their heads and gotten even for the Battle of Badr. The Hashim, family of the Prophet Muhammad, played with politics. There is no revelation and no messenger. I am not from my tribe if I do not take revenge on the descendants of Ahmad. Lady Zainab then said in her famous speech, Praises to God and the Messenger of God. Then the end result of those who have done evil was evil, because they denied the signs of God and mocked them. O oh Yazid, you think you have turned the world against us and you have driven us like slaves. You think that you have honor and you are important. You are holding your nose high and you are happy, for the world is easy for you and your kingdom is secure, but you just wait and see. Have you forgotten the saying of God? And let not those who disbelieve think that whatever we increase for them is the best for them. Indeed, we increase for them so they increase in sin and they have a humiliating punishment. Is it just, O son of Tulaqa, to drive the children of the Prophet as slaves? You exposed their privacy and exposed their faces. You paraded them from city to city. They had no one to protect them, and everyone near or far examining their faces. Do not think of those who have been killed in the way of God as dead. No, they are alive with their Lord and bestowed blessings. You took us as prisoners, as gains of the war, but soon you will be the loser when you enter the judgment of God. By God, you cannot eradicate our memory, and you cannot eradicate the revelation of God, and the shame of this will not leave you. Yazid ordered the prisoners to be moved to a prison. This was not a prison. It was a dungeon. Only a part of it had any sort of ceiling. The rest was open to the sky. An iron grill surrounded the place so that no one could get in or out. Lady Zainab reports that the place was so cold at nights that no one could have proper sleep. During the day, it got hot like an oven. It is here that our fourth Imam, still under chains, the ladies and the children spent many days of great agony and discomfort. The bravery and dignity of the family of Hussein meant that the tragic events of Karbala would never be forgotten. For it is a tale woven in the times, a flickering flame forever in the hearts of believers. Wherever there is a Yazid-like figure, there will always be a Hussein to fight for what is right, triumphing in the face of evil, 
and lifting the oppressed by giving them a voice. That is the beauty of justice.